My name is Chelsea McNamara, and I'm an occupational therapist working in stroke and brain injury rehabilitation with the Early Supported Discharge Program in Calgary, Alberta. Today, I am going to be speaking to you about managing unilateral spatial neglect post-stroke, or more commonly referred to as neglect. The Canadian Stroke Best Practice document reports that neglect affects up to 25% of people after a stroke. While recovery is common, particularly in the first six months, neglect impacts daily function and safety and can be associated with reduced functional outcomes. This short presentation today will provide education on neglect, strategies to support engagement to the affected side, and treatment activities you can engage in to optimize your functioning at home. What is neglect? Although the mechanisms underlying neglect are debated, neglect is characterized by the failure to respond, report, or orient to stimuli being presented to the opposite side of the brain lesion. It's more commonly seen as right-sided brain lesions, as it is thought to have an attentional basis. This right-sided brain lesion results in the presentation of a left neglect. Although less common, neglect can be present on the right side as well. There are thought to be many different subtypes of neglect, some of which we will discuss further in the following slides. What does neglect look like? People with neglect frequently have a reduced awareness for incoming information from the neglected side, while also having a bias for information from the same side of the brain lesion. So, for example, with a right-sided brain lesion, the individual will typically have a left-sided neglect. Therefore, they have a reduced awareness for incoming information on the left, while they also have a bias to attend to information coming from that right side, which is the same side of the brain lesion. The presentation of neglect ranges in severity. In more severe cases, people may neglect even parts of their body. So for example, they may awkwardly position their arm or sit on their arm. They may only shave or apply makeup on half their face. In less severe cases, people might have difficulty with things in their extra personal space or in their environment. So things like bumping into a doorway. They may have some difficulty with reading all the way to the, to the left if they have a left neglect. Finding an item on a store shelf or in the pantry, particularly if they're distracted or in a busy environment. Some common self-reported or observed difficulties ranging from someone who has a more severe presentation of neglect to a less severe could be my spouse doesn't groom the left side of their face properly, or they don't always seem to hear things on the left side. People tell me my left arm looks awkward or stiff. Sometimes I drop things from my left arm, especially if I'm doing something else. I sometimes bump into door frames or people while I'm out shopping. I can't type or play the piano as quickly on that side. I sometimes drag my left foot when I'm tired. Some key distinctions. Neglect is not a vision problem. The brain is not attending to the incoming information on the affected side of space, as opposed to not seeing it with the eyes. People are often not aware of the problem. Reduced awareness commonly accompanies neglect. So patients from partners or loved ones in helping the individual learn about their neglect and use strat strategies to support them is really critical. Lastly, fatigue or increased task or env environmental demands can increase the presentation of the neglect. Therefore, in the morning, after someone's had a great rest or in a very familiar, quiet environment, you may not see some of the presentation of that neglect, whereas at the end of the day, when they're quite fatigued or if they're in a very busy or a loud distracting environment, you may see um, a greater presentation of that neglect on the affected side. Strategies and treatments that support neglect. One of the most important strategies is to promote awareness of the presence of the neglect. At its most absolute basic level, an individual needs to be aware that a problem exists in the first place in order to effectively implement strategies to support them. Therefore, frequent cueing to attend to the affected side. Setting up the environment to draw attention to their affected side as much as possible. 
So even simple things like ensuring you're sitting to the affected side. When you're out for a walk, that you position yourself where they always have to attend to that side of space in order to, in order to interact with you. Um, setting up the television on that side. Setting up the their eating arrangements to always, whenever possible, have them queuing and forced to interact with that side of space. Giving the effect, affected hand a job. So having that individual hold a water bottle, a grocery bag, or whatnot when they're out shopping or walking. Engaging in two-handed by manual tasks as often as possible. So things like typing or playing an instrument um, can really help them to gain some feedback that maybe that affected side isn't interacting with the environment as much as it should be. Visual scanning training. So using anchors, things like a bookmark, a highlighted strip on a page or a door frame, even something as simple as some nail polish on a thumb, to cue individuals to look to the affected side all the way to scan their full visual field. Practice using the lighthouse strategy where you're just pretending that you're scanning your full visual field like a lighthouse all the way across the water. It's important to use all of these different visual scanning strategies across various tasks. So starting with things um, in, in their near space, so things like paper and pencil tasks, reading, and then progressing to more complicated activities such as scanning shelves or cupboards at home, in the pantry, shelves at a grocery store, where you're in kind of increasing those demands. Also, things like counting cars, counting dogs, counting bicycles on the affected side while walking or while being a passenger in a car. It's also really important that you use these visual scanning strategies for safety when you're crossing either controlled or uncontrolled intersections. Some other strategies include computer-based scanning, so playing computer games that require visual tracking or, or even things like typing activities, scanning websites, or reading articles. Virtual reality type games such as Nintendo Wii can also be helpful, particularly those that are sport focused such as bowling or tennis and those that require the use of the affected side, particularly if this is a timing or a speed component. Sensory feedback is also shown to be effective. So applying a TENS or tactile stimulation to that affected limb can help to promote just general awareness of its presence. Lastly, mirror therapy and mental imagery has also shown promise in the literature. For more information on how you can create a mirror therapy box at home, please see the links attached to this presentation. Three takeaway messages. Neglect impacts 25% of individuals post-stroke and can be associated with reduced functional outcomes. Increased awareness of the presence of the neglect through frequent cueing to scan the neglected side is important. Also, setting up the environment to engage with that affected side of space as often as possible is critical. This concludes the presentation on neglect after stroke. If you have any questions or concerns, please reach out to your family doctor or local health center. You can also check out the best practice links listed on this page. Thanks so much for listening.